What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Emil Tempest, and today we're doing Rebellion's Call uh, Set Review for the Wind Cardos. Uh, got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Um, yeah, so let's get straight into it, man. Really excited here. Uh, this Dancer one... Right, let's do this first. <laughs> when Dancer enters the field, you may pay one wind. When you do so, choose up to three characters, activate them. Uh, uh, at damage 3, dole 1, active job dancer or card name dancer, choose a forward. It gains 1,000 power until the end of the turn. So, uh, all in zone at damage 3, you can you pay the extra. Uh, you can target the three characters that you're going to activate and then dole three characters to give like extra buffs and stuff. Um, but she's just very useful also with like the whole dancer engine and what the way they work. You know, they require to dull each other to dull things on your opponent's side. Uh, it's it's very useful. I think this is a good standard unit with the gimmick from the backups this set. Uh, it's right on curve for that. It's just such a really solid card. Um, I think it's going to be very useful. Um, yeah, it's a very good card. I think it'll definitely see its way into uh, other decks as well. Like the one that lets you... The one that goes for you know casting more things in one deck like uh maybe with ice or a, a luso one of the new luso decks or you know things of that nature uh and it's it's going to be useful so the full arts might be on the costier side for this one so be, be on the lookout for those uh onion knight when onion knight enters the field choose a forward it gains this forward cannot attack or block until the end of the turn return onion knight to it uh, to its owner's hand play a forward of cost three or four from your hand onto the field so like uh, you know things like this just really works really well together right like I like that he's ninja and warrior of light uh, because the warrior of light part like opens up a lot of plays for the warrior of light deck uh, as well as the ninja deck uh, and so you know the job matters in most cases in some in like when building for certain decks like like warrior of lights and ninjas um, but overall like as a good win card you know it's just it's so good and then playing costs of three or four are just fantastic those are the those are the tough ones right those are the playmakers in most decks and so he just you know lets you do that i don't know i like him as a card a lot uh, i think he'll see play gargus i, I want to call him gragus but i know it's gargus uh black mage also two drop uh, the forward your opponent controls loses 2000 power for each poison counter on them uh, at the beginning of the attack phase, during each of your turns, choose a forward your opponent controls, place a poison counter on it. Uh, bio, S, choose up to two forwards, place three poison counters on them. So, my first thing is I want to absolutely say I love this card. Um, I, I almost wish that there had been poison status uh, from the beginning of the game and that it always did this. How Gragas would be different going forward would be that his counters... Uh, that while he was on the field counters would do more like would reduce for more uh, as well as yes he could put one on you and uh, you know so on and so forth right and that's and that's fine but in general I'm just happy to be seeing the poison mechanic right because we have uh, you know we have statuses I guess that we don't really like that we don't really use kind of like that like being dull being dull dulled or frozen or whatever isn't isn't necessarily a thing in final fantasy frozen sure but i guess as far as statuses goes and what statuses do like some that's that's a a traditional like video game mechanic right for the game and so i guess seeing something like that reflected in card is always nice for me anyway as a fan uh all things considered i think he's a solid card uh, remember, things don't lose poison counters on them, uh, even if he dies. So, assuming you're playing this in your deck, being able to bring them out eventually, like they'll still have their uh, counters on them, right? Um, and so, just the fact that he comes out and then he puts something on you just kind of sets the pace for him. He he doesn't wait to like do stuff, and then when you bio something, you could effectively kill an eight drop, right? Like an eight K, not an eight drop, sorry. Um, and so it just kind of helps you like control the board a little bit. Um, I, I really don't know if where he's going to find a home. 
uh he's got a lot of uh, redeeming qualities like he's a two drop so he's cheap black mage so you know there's the new vivi uh the latest vivi and the black loss packages kind of uh ffbe which we know is strongest set and he's also searchable um all in all he's a great card i think in limited he's busted too like in sealed like if you pull this and enough backups go wind and that's just that if you pull more multiples of these i definitely say go <laughs> wind for sure um ranger uh two cost backup uh this is the the gimmicky one so wind drop three cost forwards um standard units and we saw whoops spoilers uh this is probably like from for the limited side is probably one of the better options but you know um i think wind is going to take advantage of this as well a lot so uh kelger legendary uh i think he's good i just think he's late uh, if your opponent doesn't control a four to five cost or more, Kelgar gains haste for strike and brave. When Kelgar enters the field, you may pay a win. When you do so, choose a four to cost five or more and break it. I like this effect, but it seems like an old effect. Also, like we could have used him last set. I think he's he's really good for like um, uh, for breaking those stalemate kind of things. Cause uh, and I, that's just the way I see it, right? Or like he helps in that in that regard, uh, especially for mono wind and wind cards uh, and wind decks. Um, you know, wind is nothing, there's nothing new breaking a cost of five or more for wind. That's usually like one of their, you know, like always like, oh, this another card that does this, right? Uh, but this guy benefits from having, like when your opponent doesn't control anything, which is like, I guess an up, an up, a level up for that, right? For them. Um, I think he's cool. He might be a one of, honestly, like in, in some mono wind decks or and how important five cost decks are like you know i don't think again i don't think versteel is going to be too 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 popular this uh of course it'll always be around because the deck is annoying and just you know unanswered can steal a whole game faster than anything um but like i i, I just think he's a good card like he's he does enough for me to be to to you know he's okay now is he a legendary maybe not but he's all right uh thief um yeah no i'm i'm not big on this one even if it is to mill so you know put the your opponent puts the top two cards of their deck into the bottom breaks them if you've taken point of damage they do four yeah that's it's okay um i would need to have three of these set up for me to like make a dent in my opponent's breaks on if i take a damage and then being able to recur them now uh being objective too as a as a target for fat chocobo because we know that's relevant still like coming from the last meta the last like opus that uh is this gonna make its way into that no nah, probably not uh neither is uh, the other one might though i think so sid polandina engineer uh when he enters the field you may search for a category four forward and add your hand um yeah my biggest problem is his name right now we can't play the other one uh that also searches engineers uh forwards engineers and so um i have to choose but i'm glad category four finally got their forward searcher i'm glad it's not any experts because that would be absurd um and as your hand uh the force stuff is going to be like a big sleeper um when someone figures it out i think it's going to be tough uh but now we have all the options right everything we were looking for before uh we have it now and so we're gonna we're gonna be okay i think um cecil when cecil enters the field draw a card ex burst sure uh we have two other cecils that are great so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this guy. Uh, seven, uh, tap, choose an opponent's auto ability. If your opponent doesn't pay two, cancel its effect. Yeah, so this is a real, this is a real punch in the throat sometimes. Um, I like this card a lot. Um, I don't know if it's strong enough to, you know, keep its, keep its own legs, but I think it's cool that Wind has more stuff like this. Um, you know, between the Fina, the Sin, uh, this, Cecil, and Edge, uh, where your opponent is going to have a really tough time. Now, if you just have all that stuff out on the board and like, uh, what's cool about this instead of the Fina, um, is that it's like, it doesn't have to be forwards only, right? And you don't have this extra limitate, like limitation on it, uh, from, you know, having for needing for backups or whatever, right? The... The only, the biggest thing you could take from this too is that Totos are now 9 and Titans are now 11, right? Like, uh, it's just something to think about. Um, it's a safe card and it's going to go along there with Ishtola too, right? Like, if, if these two there, like, I'm not saying it replaces Ishtola because Ishtola is a lot better, but 
Um, in addition to, you could probably play one or one of the one or two of these in uh, with your deck. Or it also depends on the deck, right? Like, does Ishtola fit in the deck uh, objectively, or do you have another Ishtola that you already play in that deck, right? Um, I mean that because one of the legacy cards is the the, the Wind Earth one that people that saw a lot of play last uh, last Opus as well. Like it was a uh, it was good for the Soiree count mirror matches, right? Because they none of the Soirees could block, and you could go in for damage or whatever. Um, but yeah, so it's a really cool card. I think it's tough, uh, but it's cool that Wins keeps getting more like lockdown things. Uh, Dario, uh, Hoon, Prince, and Mystic Knight. If Dario is still damaged, reduce that damage by 2,000 instead, and uh, Dario Horn cannot be broken by your opposing summons or abilities that don't deal damage. At the end of each of your turns, choose a 4, activate it, and then choose a character of 4 or more, uh, break it for a small s. Um, I like this guy, I'm pretty sure, I don't know the exact call, and someone please put it in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure this is Masuri's brother or cousin. Um, they're obviously, I know they're related, or from the same house at least. Um, is he gonna bring the same impact? Uh, I don't think so, but he's very good. Um, I like his his second effects. Uh, you know, cannot be broken by opposing summons or abilities that don't do damage, which is solid, right? Like you can't straight break them. And then um, at the end of your turn, choose forward and activate it. So it's just like he, you know, he could always attack, and then if he survives, he he he'll, he'll most likely survive battle. But if he survives the ex burst, then he just upright again. Which means he's going to be a big problem to deal with. He's very sticky, is his big thing, right? And then he has the option to break stuff later for pretty cheap, um, I might add. Uh, and he's cost four or more, so, you know, answers problems in other in big decks. So, uh, definitely, and he's nice and searchable with that Prince tag. So, my, my guy, really good. Yo, this Chocobo is great. Reveal the top three cards of your deck and add a character among them to your hand. Return the other cards to the bottom of your deck in any order. I'll take that. Just scry three, grab one, let's go. Bye. Great card. Super cheap. And it's a bird. What else is there to ask for? Uh, Tiamat. Uh, when Tiamat attacks, choose a character you control. You may return it to its owner's hand. When you do so, uh, when you receive a fifth point of damage, you can play him like the rest of them. So, uh, probably my uh, second favorite one. Uh, I think it's Lich, Tiamat, and then uh, probably Merilith and uh, the Squid. I can't remember his name, but um, yeah, yeah, he's he's good. I, I think I like the art on all of these. This with the full art just looks super like sexy. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, choose a character you control. So it could be anything, right? Anything that you want to replay it just does that trigger. Um, I think Wind will. This will probably be the one that Wind plays. The only one that in a deck will play more than a one of, right? Like uh, this isn't a bad ex burst to to like net, and it's. A solid effect to play out throughout the game in a wind deck or any kind of wind variant um and it's just it's just tight man like i don't know it's it's good and then the the the, the effect uh the five like a five damage effect is solid right like it's value too right it's going to come in lift something you're going to be able to replay it or like send something kind of survive i don't know it has a different app it has multiple avenues of like versatility for uh, as opposed to some of the other ones uh so uh very good very good card uh, Typhon, uh, this is a Cat 6 Typhon. When Typhon enters the field, choose up to two cards your opponent control, uh, your opponent's breaks on, sorry, and remove them from the game. Return Typhon to his owner's hand for free, and then uh, Snort. You can uh, S to win and a color to choose a forward, remove it from the game. Now, my biggest problem is I don't know if this is going to replace the current Typhon. There's a lot of, the argument can go both ways, right? That other Typhon does a unique thing. Uh, this Typhon might free up our back row. We could play multiples of this and, and have an S option onhu. He saves himself, so he's never going to do it. He triggers big Bismarck, but the other Typhon is cheaper and, you know, blah, 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 blah. We could also play both and then, I think, be able to use the S ability. So, um, it's just interesting, man. I don't know. I like this card. I like both Typhons. Um, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tight. I don't know. What do you guys think of this one? Let me know. Do you play this one or the old one? Give me, leave it in the comments. Uh, the legendary Noah, we went into big detail on this guy, um, so I'll keep it short here. Uh, the main thing is, uh, so when he attacks, you may remove him from the game. Uh, if you do so at the beginning of your next main phase, play Noah onto the field. When Noah enters the field due to an ability, select one of the following actions. 
Choose a character of class 4 more, break it. Noel deals 1 point of damage uh, or search forward and add it to your hand. At 3 damage, Noel gains haste. I think my biggest thing is that uh, before damage 3, he doesn't do, he's not as scary. Even if you're able to do it first turn, like, you know, play Noel, give him haste, you know, Belias, Jellyfish, or a Sage, or whatever. Um, it's just, it doesn't do much for me after that. Either way, after that, still one turn. At three damage though, drawing this or you know ripping this is just prepare yourself, right? Because I'm doing things, and if you don't answer me, you're pretty you're in trouble for the rest of the game. Uh, so uh, he's a he's a very dangerous threatening card. I just don't know uh, where where he finds a home. Uh, he will for sure, I think, because he's gonna be great, um, and he's got a lot of like he does a lot for you, um, and he steals games too at, at you know any <laughs> pretty late in the game. Uh, but yeah, uh, Pinello, uh, at the end of each of your turns, deal 1,000 damage for each card you have cast this turn to all forwards your opponent controls, uh, and then dole an active job dancer or card name dancer other than Pinello, choose a forward, its power becomes 4,000 until the end of the turn. Uh, lots of, lots of good stuff here. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really just that she's uh, a dancer. And uh, going with the other dancer we got in the set, uh, I think dancers got just enough to help them out a lot more. Um, and I'm very excited for that. I, I saw what they could do firsthand uh, at our locals a lot, so um, I'm actually excited to play them now. Um, also, being that she's not limited to like, Sky Pirates anymore, and like uh, it's good for Pinella to get out of that. Um, she, I think this card earned her hero. Unfortunately, I don't know if she'll do more outside of uh, being in a Dancer deck yet. I can't put my hand on that, but we'll see. <laughs> Uh, Fujito, when Fujito is put from the field in the break zone, choose a forward your opponent controls, remove from the game. Uh, put Fujito into the break zone, look at the top two cards of your deck, and put a card among them to the top of your deck, and one to the bottom. So, he's a four cost with latent effect to remove a forward from the game, which I like. Um, the real question is, is he worth it? Uh, I think so. I think a one of might be, might be just enough for me to like, you know, fix my deck around like to organize my deck around and he's not a bad choice overall when your deck doesn't have like certain kinds of removal uh, obviously it's better to play him early and kind of hold him um and then uh, the second effect is just it's a little added flavor but i don't know if it's if it's what the the card itself needed or what the element needed so um there's that uh, all in all decent card uh hope when hope ends to reveal, reveal the top card of your deck if it is uh, if it is a character, add it to your hand. If it's category 13 character, also activate hope. So as long as it's a character, it's kind of like the hurdy I said, like we had before. As long as it's a character, you're fine. If it's not, it's, it feels real bad. <clears throat> oh, the Yagudo. That's what I was forgetting. When Yagudo enters the field, choose a forward. Its power becomes 4,000 until the end turn. And then you can uh, pay two wind and tap, put Yagudo to the brakes and choose a forward. Its power becomes 4,000. So um, you can't kill anything with this, but you can make things a lot like uh, two things, two different things uh, at 4,000 in one turn. What's interesting though is uh, with cards like Realm, you could bring this and the Tomberries out and then technically kill something on entry, which is, I think is interesting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this was, it's decent. I think it, it, it's gonna be a, a niche deck where it finds play, but it might. And again, glad that you, the, you, the Yuguru got some, or the 11 stuff got some honest art, and I respect it. Archer, choose a four, deal it 2,000 damage. Uh, um, put Archer in the breakdown, choose a four, deal it 10k. Uh, we've seen cards like this before. This is obviously a power card version. Uh, like, you know, it kind of rolls out the other ones. Um, I don't know if we'll have an Archer Ranger deck in the future, but I, I don't even know if this would make it once we get there, so. Another Ricard, if you control category 2 forward under the Ricard, Ricard gains 1,000 power and summons and abilities, your opponent must choose Ricard if possible. I like his effect, I hate the stipulation on it, um, but uh, it, it comes with a buff, so it's, you know, it's balanced, I guess, is the word we, we, we might be looking for there. Um, won't see too much standard play, but solid and limited. Uh, if you have the two cards, obviously. Um, and when Lucio enters the field, if you have cast three or more cards this turn, draw a card. And Lucio enters the field, if you've cast seven or more cards uh, this turn, deal 8,000 to all the forge your opponent controls. So, um, 
I don't know if this card is enough to build a deck around of and because you would need to be in positions where your opponent is like doing good and you want to just like stop them and then is 8,000 really enough? Um, is he good enough for just the first ability? Maybe with the second ability as a possibility? I think that's more, more realistic. Um, I, I think uh, the, the biggest problem is his name. Uh, the Luso that we've had in the past, uh, especially for what I want to do anyway. Uh, I think I'll be using other Lusos. Um, some people say that, uh, this might make it into uh, Wind Ice um, with lots of extra possibilities because there's a lot of new cards that like activate and let you recast and do things. Um, we'll have to see if it if it's possible yet to do it all on one turn, right? Like cast 20 things in one turn and then like, all right, I'm super set for the for the game and like now you can take your turn. You're at three backups. Go. You know what I mean? Like. If this is all adding to the big picture, then sure. But until then, I'm not ready for. It. I'm not into it yet. And lastly is the the legacy Ishtola. I'm glad uh, for two things. Now that we're getting the legacies in the you know in the card browser here, um, on the you know the Final Fantasy on the Square Enix homepage, uh, if Ishtola is still damage, power less than her, damage becomes zero instead, and Ishtola can have a block by four to four more. Has haste nine k three three cost. Um, yeah, she's a good card. I, I didn't think she she just came out what five sets ago, so like I don't think she needed to reprint so closely. But you know, yeah, I guess that's it for the review. My uh, top five are definitely Dancer, uh, Dario, Pinello, uh, Typhon, um, and this last few. The last one is a, is a close tie between Gargas, Tiamat, and like uh, you know I know Noel is good and so is Kelger, but uh, in and even chokeable right all these cards are good i think wind got a lot of really useful cards that are going in a lot of different places but yeah dancer uh typhon dario Pinello, and then like tied for fifth is gragas and tiamat and then also honor mentions are chokeable and the and the sid paladina right because we needed that for searcher um but yeah guys let me know what you think what's your favorite one uh and uh what are you building first out of the wind stuff are you doing dancers or are you really into this uh null and uh, Kelger. <laughs> Leave it in the comments, please. Um, I will catch you guys later.